so I'm going to wait a couple of minutes before I get started. Allow people to turn up. seems brighter. I appear to have a, a hundred watt or a daylight light bulb that I use for photographs every now and again and that's I think making quite a bit of a difference. Oh, where's my little choppy choppy thing? There you are on the floor. Where else would you be? So today, today we're going to do oh, possibly two Highland cows because they don't actually take that long to do. So, fun guys, say hello, introduce yourselves, tell me where you're from. I'll start. I'm Caroline. Um, I have a page called Matches Pots. I live in the northeast coast of Scotland and um but i'm from the northwest coast of scotland so how about you guys oh it says there's nine people on but nobody's chatting can you hear me okay oh 12 people Now comments switched on. So there's a comments on, comments on. Hi Susie. So first thing I do when I'm making my cows is I make a body, which are double pinch pots. So I get a vague oblong shape and turn it into a pinch pot. Uh, I'm a bit concerned because there is an Eddie sitting at the bed beside me. And when there's an Eddie. Hello Monica from Chicago. Or in Chicago. <laughs> um, when Eddie decides that he wants to be somewhere. You just kind of have to let him do it. So hopefully he's just going to sit and watch. From the sides. So yeah. I don't really take that much care with my pinch pots. Clay is quite soft. It's going to meld together. I basically try and fit them over. And then just blend them in together. It would be different if I was going to, I don't know, open it up or anything like that. But these are nice and closed. You're never going to see the inside of them. Well, not unless you drop them on the floor. So I don't really care about the joins other than the fact that they are joins. So. So we end up with a vague, vague kind of, I don't know, egg shaped. And then I'm going to use a tool. This one happens to be the one I'm handy, and I'm going to kind of flat the top because cows have got slightly flat tops. And I'm going to flatten the bottom. And we have one cow body. Okay. And I'm going to make a second cow body. And then we're going to decorate them two different ways. I need two bits roughly that size. This will be my, oh, I don't know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's about my 20th cow or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. So again, I just squish in the middle and get kind of vaguely oblongy shape. Same with the other side. Hi Elsa, you managed to join. We're making a Highland cow, yes. It's <laughs> exactly what we're making. And this one's probably gonna be slightly bigger than the other one, but won't worry. Uh, I'm gonna join the two together. As I say, I just kind of line them up. My clay's soft, don't have to worry about slip. 
because I'm squishing it together so slip's not a big factor in this at all. So I get them kind of squished together, get rid of the seam. No bother. You're going to walk across the table, aren't you? One of my cats is trying to join in. And do the belly. That's it. And I really score into these so I'm, I don't need to make them smooth or anything. And we've got a slightly bigger one than the other one, but that's fine. So that's my bodies. So I'll leave my bodies to dry out a little bit while I make the head. I make the head. Um, I then make the legs and a tail and, and and then I start attaching them all together. So the head, if you've watched any of my other ones, it's very similar to how I make other things. So I have a pinch pot bowl for the back of the head. I have a kind of Sometimes I don't like to use my fingers because my fingers are a bit fat for the start. So, and I have a kind of squarish cylindery thing for the nose of the cow. So, looks a bit like that. And then I get coil that I flatten out for the brow of the cow. So then I attach this along the front and you can smooth it in at the back as well and then I kind of make it a little bit more vertical and we've got the start of a uh, triceratops. <laughs> triceratops and cows look very similar, you must admit. So then I kind of match it up with the back of the head and I smooth the top in Hello Jenny from Broxburn Broxburn in Scotland down near Edinburgh Broxburn there we go so and then I start to smooth the bottom in and then I kind of uh, pinch the sides together and smooth them over. So you've got this kind of round ball shaped on top of a kind of oblong. So prise that apart, do the top and kind of squeeze the middle together. And if this gaps where it kind of goes in further than what you like, see that one's got a little bit more rounded than that side. Eddie, we're about to have the attack of the Godzilla on the poor defenseless little cows. He's on top of the sewing machine. He's ready to enter the Maria or the arena. Eddie, do you think maybe you could not join mommy when she's doing them um, clay stuff? Oh, here we go. I find it best to let them have a wee look first. Let's see how we go on. So, oh, you are in that Brox Barn. Cool, I've been there. My daughter lives in Grangemouth, so I go down there regularly, but not at the moment. Um, the clay is a cheap and nasty stoneware. And Scotland, and I think in England actually, it's generally called school buff. Um, I like it. I can. I used to be able to throw with it. Not that I throw anymore. I hand build, but I quite like it for hand building. So that's kind of the basic shape of a cow. Now I'm going to put the other one together, um, and then I'll start putting the features on. So you get to see how I make the cow head. So I roll it into a ball and of course it's going to be cat hair in everything that I do today but that's fine. Cat hair burns out, doesn't it Eddie? You're not allowed to sit and have a wash. No you're not. You want to say hello to everybody? See if you look in the camera up there. Can I say hello? <laughs> right, back of the head and then 
the nose. As I say, it's just a pinched out cylinder. And when you've got clay this soft, you don't have to be too precious about it. Anyway, it just comes up to sit inside mummy so that you can wash, basically. I think he's a monster, so he is. Where are you going now? <laughs> Get over there, you monster. Right, so the brow is going to get attached first. So that was Eddie, guys. Eddie is a hello, Oren from Costa Rica. <laughs> It is wallpaper. I've run out of newspaper. <laughs> and um, normally I just work on a little bit of newspaper, but I've kind of run out and I don't buy newspaper. So, and I don't know anybody anymore who buys newspaper. So I went, oh look, there's some of that anaglypty type stuff. It'll be fine, I'll use that. So that's the front. Okay, he's a bit big. I'm just gonna pinch some of the clay from the edges because this ball's a little bit on the big side for that size of face there we go fine now so attach the bottom curve it more so we can pinch the top together da, da, da. and then push that in So you have to tell me if I'm talking too much or not talking enough or yes, Eddie's my boy. He's a cute one. He's um he's quite willful and he does it all in such a gentle way. He's very much um right mummy, I'm going to come and sit on you or mummy, I'm going to go on your shoulders. And you're just best to let him do it because if you don't, <laughs> he does it anyway. <laughs> he's a cat that star jumps onto you. So now we're going to add the features. So we're going to turn this into something that looks very much like a cow. Well, I hope it looks like a cow. It looks a little bit like a cartoon cow because um, cow eyes are kind of over this side and you've got a bigger brow, whereas my eyes are slightly more front facing than reality. So I'm going to push in there. And I say, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I am terrible for symmetry. And that also, I don't really care that much. So, um, and as I tell other people, um, symmetrical faces don't exist. There you go. That's bad at getting into her hidey hole behind the third light. <laughs> But she'll be fine. You might see the odd paw sticking out. So two round balls go into where I put the indents in. One of them slightly bigger than the other. We're not worried about that. Um, and this is how I make all my eyes, whether it be cow or cat or rabbit or human face. What else have I made? Um, dragon. Um, oh, just everything gets eyes that look like this. You know, if you've got something that works, why change it up that much? <laughs> so each one gets a lower bra uh, a lower eyelid and an upper eyelid. And I think there's enough clay around there. So you just cover the slight bottom of the eyeball and then you we blend it in, so you can't really see it. And the same with that side. And I just use the excess clay as part of the body. Don't worry about it too much. Blend it in. And that's it. So we just blend it in. Okay, so that's the lower lids. On the upper lid. And I try to make them slightly sideways. So at this point it could be anything. It could be a giraffe. 
it could be a dinosaur, it could be a chicken, just about, I could always put beak on it. So we have two eyes. Now I don't worry about smoothing out because I'm going to put lots of hair onto these guys so I don't have to bother, bother about it. Hi Mike, how are you? What's bright and light these days? So next I'm doing horns, which is basically just a coil. <laughs> Roll it into a ball and then start rolling one end firmer than the other one. I end up with two horns. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of slip on that side. And the lovely thing about horns is you can make them go in any direction you want. So you can make them like that, or you can put them up like that. Or you can have half a horn. So many possibilities. So this guy's getting his horn this way. That sounds smutty, but it's not. We're talking about a real horn here. <laughs> right, one side, other side. Now, again, the horns don't need to be matching, so I can, I'm gonna put him like that. And at the moment he looks a bit devilish, I think. Now, my bigger statues, I tend to leave the eyes just round and then I paint on them. But because these eyes are not gonna have anything other than a little bit black put in them, I tend to put holes in them. One, it makes it easier to find them by the time I've covered them completely in hair. <laughs> um, so that's them so far. I'll sit them down again. And I'm going to make ears. Conway's. <laughs> so yeah, Brighton, I've no doubt it's trendy. I wonder if you've got the same issues that London's having with them. Um, people going out. Well, half sent me a video um, just a wee while ago from Twitter and it was a park in London and it was full of people. Heaps of people on their bicycles and heaps of people um, Parking, it was like once a year in Aberdeen, they do a um, opera in the park. And um, so at the moment I'm making the ears, so I just do a kind of triangle shape and then I flatten it out, pinch it. And from one of my friend colleagues who um, used to live on a cow, um, I, don't know, I can't remember if it was dairy cows or not, um, she says if the ears are pointing up, it means that the cow is healthy. So all my cows are healthy because all of them have ears pointing up. So yeah, so the, the, the Twitter video was loads of people in the park, people out walking, people having cups of coffee, people cycling in bunches, um, you know, close to each other, obviously out for a group cycle. And you're just going, what is it about self-isolation that you don't understand crazy now these are the kind of people that's going to keep this virus going for months and months and months it's not as easy to attach with a downward facing one so i put slip on and then um just smoothing all the edges of the ears into the body of the cow There we go. We have a cow with two ears, two eyes, and two horns. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is the mouth. Am I going slow enough, everybody? Or am I going too fast? Or am I not talking enough? Come on, give me some feedback so I know what I'm doing. Next thing I'm gonna make is tongue. Now, my cows are known for their cheeky tongues. Apparently cows use their tongues to um, clean their noses. So it's a sign of a healthy cow when their tongue is sticking out because they're doing what they need to be doing. So it's a tongue shape. I put a little indent around the middle and the same on the back. Just so it's obvious to everybody that it's a 
tongue. And then I have to decide which way I'm putting the tongue. So I'm going to put holes. If I can find something to give me the right size of hole. So my nose is fairly flat, like a cow's nose. Hey, Dee Dee. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. So one hole two hole but cow's nose aren't round so need another tool so I'm going to make them a bit like that okay that's my cow's nose I'm then going to put a hole in to stick my tongue in I'm going to put some slip in my tongue not too much so I'm going to back out and then I'm going to put my tongue in. Now before I position my tongue I'm going to put a lips in. So for the top lip it's just a flat coil. Put a little bit of slip in there not too much so flat coil I'm going to curve it around and then we put it into place. Okay, so we've got a top lip. The bottom lip is a kind of ball shape. Let's sit there. Um, that's got one flat edge. So it's kind of that shape. Well, it's not as easy to see, but that's the way it is. And you can see me put it on so you can see where I put it. A little bit of white stuff again. And we're going to put it in place and then kind of smooth it into place. So that's the tongue's face. So, can I have the tongue sticking out? This one I'm going to put it towards the nose so I'm going to put the the dots in tongue has the cows have quite um like little dots all over where their nose nut is so I put that in first uh, and sometimes the glaze covers it up and sometimes it doesn't so that's my tongue so we've got I'm going to put that nose back in a bit. So that's the basics of the cow. So and I'm going to put in hair. And I'm putting the hair in first because then I'm going to put the the locks of hair over the top. Um And it's going to cover some of this up, but as long as it's there to start off with, then I don't have to worry about trying to get the scoring tool underneath and that kind of thing. And also this proves to be a good place for um, adding it. So to finalise this head, I do a load of flattened coils. And these are for the floppy bits of hair that go over the top. And once I've done that, I'm going to score them. Or I'm going to put them on and then score them. And then we put, we do the legs. And we attach the legs to the body. And then we put a neck on the body. And then we put the head on the body. And then we do the decoration, whether it's just the hairiness. Yeah, so that's just a whole pile. Or it might be a hat or a flower. I did think about putting a tie on one of them, a bit like I did with my dog the other day. Thank you, Betsy. I know you love my cows. You're one of the people that said you would like to see the tutorial. Hi, Sari. Hi, Maggie. Oh, thank you. I like my cows too. 
I think they're awfully sweet. And Highland cows are just fun anyway. So I just basically start building up and I score them as I build up. It's amazing. It's what I love about clay is you can start off with something that looks like not really very much. It's a couple of misformed balls and flattened coils and and funky stuff and then you end up with something that's just so cute and you think oh how did I make that? And the cow started earlier on earlier last year. I started selling stuff out of a new shop and she goes you don't make cows do you? And I was like no but I could and then I made my first set of cows and I'm like oh I quite like these guys I think I'll make more and I like them because they don't look like anybody else's cows and they're not the spaghetti stringy bits of clay cows they're unique of course now I'm telling you all how to do it so they won't be quite as unique anymore It needs one more, one more there. So you all have to keep my secret. <laughs> Actually, I'd be quite happy to see you all make Highland cows. So we have Misha Highland cow. Basically, that's his face done. I need to put some, so these bits aren't so obvious at the back. So I'm gonna score all down the back of his head. All down the back. Get back into the screen, Caroline, for goodness sake. There we go, a bit better. All down the back. And just make sure I've got... So, we have one Highland cow face. I'm going to sit them over there for the moment. And we're going to get enough clay. I need to get a bit more clay to um, do his legs. And legs are dead easy. <laughs> um, basically four coils. Stumpy coils of clay, um, roughly the same size. Same size really helps because that way um, he doesn't fall over. <laughs> Thank you very much, Betty. <laughs> the clay, um, who was that? Connie, the clay is what I call a school buff stoneware. So it's very cheap, it's very generic. Um, it comes out a kind of toasty beige in the firing um, it fires to around cone 5 and 6 I think you can go slightly higher with it but it's um, it's the cheapest one that I can get a hold of and it seems to be fairly robust right so legs I don't measure them I just make them where do things go? Hi Lata! Yeah, I couldn't live without my clay, especially in these times. So far in the past couple of days I've made three cows, a small chicken planter, a large chicken planter, three Picasso mugs and a great big lady um, planter who I've been planning to make for ages. So I kind of make the coil and I dunt it so you've got that kind of slightly elephant foot shape. I have no idea if cows have got elephant feet or not. And then I flatten the top. And this is a bit I kind of score and attach to the body. So I need to make one that's a similar size. So right. I get a ball and then I coil And actually, I don't really care if they're exactly the same size or shape. <laughs> That's me. Alexa, turn off. Ah, oh, sometimes she thinks I'm talking to her when I'm obviously not talking to her. And then when I am talking to her, sometimes she ignores me. But there we go. So, how's the video going so far, guys? And we've seen it, we're having a good chat. 
How's everybody doing with their isolation? Personally, I'm doing fine. I like being at home with my cats. I'm at home because I'm on annual leave. Normally I'd be at work, but not on a Sunday, but the rest of the time. But all of next week I'm on annual leave, so all of next week I will be doing more videos and making more stuff and thoroughly enjoying the staycation. Thank you very much. Connie, I'm glad you're enjoying it. He's a bit skinny, but we're not going to worry about that. All my cows are unique. Right, head-wise, is he... I think we're going to go for the big body for this guy's head because he's quite a decent sized head. So, as a body. It's slightly misshapen, but it's basically a curved flattened oblong so I'm going to I've got quite a stiff brush put some lines on it ready and I'm going to start putting the legs and that on so I place them and then I just twist them so they they adhere to the body and then I smooth them into the body and then I get a tool and I kind of just slightly push some of the clay from the inside of the leg onto the body as well. So you don't so there is a seam but it's not an obvious seam. Right, so next one. I try and get it in the right place. So again, slip, kind of scoring. Well, thank you, Caroline. I'm glad you're enjoying the video. Again, try and get them so they're vaguely even. Twist them into place and they start to stick together and then smooth. Oh, I think this is going to be the back end of my cow. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we'll see what he's like when he gets all his legs on. It's always a work in progress for me. So you can all understand me, yeah? I am Scottish. I do have a Scottish accent, but I don't have a really strong Scottish accent. So hopefully I'm fairly understandable. Right. So front end. Same thing. Squish, twist smooth okay and then last but not least squish Do the inner bits and say so just pushing a little bit of clay from the leg into the body so there's a, a seam but not an obvious one and they're joined all the way around basically okay and then cool I think that's my front. So the back is going to get a tail, which is nothing exciting. It's a chunk of stuff and a flattened top, a little bit of slip, and then we basically put it on and smooth it over. A bit prominent then I can flatten it up a little bit smooth it a bit more one tail next is the head so Highland cows don't ever appear to have necks they do have eggs um so 
like just give them a very small neck. It's more for pushing it into the body and into the neck so that it's well attached. So slip it on that side, decide where the neck's going. Okay, so that's it attached to the body and then I'm going to slip, well no, squish the bottom half into the body. Okay. Right. Now, cows tend to have this chunk going down the front that sits slightly more prominent than on the body. So I'm just putting another coil and then I'll squidge it in. Okay, flat a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to slip this, slip this, and then I'm going to, it can be looking up, it can be looking down, it can be slightly off to the side. There we go. And then basically I'm slipping squishing the head into the neck and I do this first and then what I do is I will get a scoring tool and I will score in all the hair okay so we have a slightly sideways looking little cow there. Sounds like I'm calling people names. And then basically what I do is I add all the hair in the direction that I think it should go. Yeah, this is the body here. And it's basically two slightly overly shaped pinch pots joined together and then I flatten it on here and flatten it on there and I do the body first and sit it aside and um, just so that it can dry a little bit all right so what I'm doing is I'm just going over all and scoring in the direction that I think um, the cow hair would go. And so along the back is a kind of line so all the hair will come from that line kind of slightly diagonal and then start to straighten off as it heads down the body. And I dig in fairly deeply, especially on the legs because they are just coils. So I don't have to worry about breaking through the body or anything like that. Okay, so there's a few down there. Now in real cows, um, Highland cows, the fur goes like almost to the feet just about, but I like to see my legs. All right, to be able to do this, but under here, I need to lift it up. All right. And he needs some hair under his chin. And you could use any scoring tool for this sort of thing. I tend to just use what's handy. But I guess it depends on how thick, how thin you want the bits. He could have a cowbell, absolutely. It's definitely that possibility. Uh, I'll score a bit on there. So once I've done the hair, I'll have a think about how I'm going to make her, I'll call them her, her one of my cows, which means that she's got to have a flower or a hat or a um, bow tie or a tie or something. Okay. 
Okay. You still see? change the position so I can get the underneath make sure I've got the legs and I'm kind of holding on to the head it shouldn't come off but you never know I'm sure one of my other videos I was telling you about um, one of my students had done a cow and as I was taking it out of the biscuit <laughs> blinking head and neck fell off it's like oops that wasn't attached particularly well so the tail is a little bit more difficult I tend to kind of hold on to it while I'm doing it or it could easily be knocked off so we look a little bit on that side right so next thing is I put hoof marks I have to hold it on the bottoms. I don't do it beforehand because I don't always know which direction I'm putting the foot on. <laughs> so I do it at the end. So the hoof marks. I put my zombie cat initials on there. So what do you think we should put on this guy? <laughs> yeah, the tongue is a big thing with cows. You often see lots of pictures with them with the tongues out and I like them because it makes them cheeky. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a necktie on this guy and the flower or her. Girls can wear ties as well, absolutely. So this this little lassie is going to have a tie on because she's a, a proper, proper lady. Okay, so I'm going to just roll out a coil and I'm going to flatten it and then I'm going to put a little slip on because I'm not going to um, be able to push and twist this on so I just want it to kind of adhere on its own. So that's one side. Okay, I'm going to make a kind of diamond shape for the tie and then I'm going to do another flat coil that comes to a point. It's a kind of diamond point isn't it? Okay. All right, so again with the slip. I'm not going to attach the bottom of it. I'm just going to attach the top part. All right, and then we're going to put that bit over there like that. And then I'm going to put a couple of we marks in it. Right, so our girl has a tie on it. And I'm also going to give her a sunflower, I think. Sunflower? Sunflower. I like sunflowers. Sunflowers are my favourite flower. So that's her there. And I also find that when I'm moving it around, some of the scory bits get a little bit soft. So sunflower is just lots of these. I'm going to make a whole load of these. Yep, she got a tie. Ah, uh, I put a daisy on my... What did I put a daisy on? Oh, my lady last night. So, unfortunately, it's going to be sunflower today. Not that there's a huge difference the way I make them. <laughs> the daisy has a smaller inner bit. And I try to make it slightly more bulbous. <laughs> um, where the sunflower's got a much bigger one. And the thing I like about sunflowers is I can make them yellow. Uh, daisies, well, you can make daisies different colours as well actually because Michaelmas daisies have bits of red and that sort of thing in them too. 
I'm not a big flower person. No, I like flowers. I just don't know much about flowers. So I could be saying absolute rubbish most of the time. One of these days I have to do a thistle because we're Scottish. So we have to have thistles on things every now and again. But I haven't done a thistle yet. I've done daisies. I've done roses. Um, I've done sunflowers. I'm sure I did another flower that was a Scottish kind of weed, but I can't remember the name of that. I wonder if that's enough. Okay, let's have a look at our girl and see. Yeah, I'm going to put it up that side, I think. So I'm going to kind of wet that area. And I'm going to just start putting on the petals. Put a little bit of moisture. It's a nice big sunflower, so she is. A bit more. It's a fat leaf. No, I think I need a couple more. Okay. And then a nice round disc, which I'm going to slip. And then I'm going to hold her head while I squish that into place. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to dot all over it. Okay. And then I'm going to take my scoring tool and just do a couple of lines. So there we go. There's Sunflower, Thai, and Highland Cow. Last thing, one last thing. I've already put a hole in there. I put holes in mine. I know that you don't have to, but um, it takes forever for things to dry in Scotland. So holes, I think, help with the air getting in. And then I put one on the bottom. And we have one finished Highland Cow. Hi Valerie and Malta, how was that? Is that good? Do you enjoy it? So you'll all be able to go away and make your own cows. You can make them more hairy and um, you can actually put bits of hair on them. Um, your horns can go in different directions, you don't have to put flowers on them, your tongues can go out and to the side or not out at all. It's entirely up to you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and um, I'll have a think about what we're going to do tomorrow night. Um, and um, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye!